Well, welcome in the precious and glorious name of Jesus to the Ignited Mentoring Series. My name is Robert Pears. In this episode, we're going to talk about faith. And I'm going to share insight from Smith Wigglesworth, who's referred to as the Apostle of Faith. When we look at the Word, we are told that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when I look at the great heroes of faith, and we see a whole list of them, of course, in the Word, what separated them was the fact that they dared walk by faith. They dared believe God that what God said He would do. And God is an equal opportunity discriminator. Discriminate on behalf of those who will, by faith, believe in Him. If we're to see our worship please Him, if we're to see our prayer life be effective, if we're to walk on this earth in such a manner that brings Him glory and is well-pleasing to Him, then all these things must be done by faith. But what is faith and how do we walk by faith? How do we stand and pray by faith? How do we listen to this here? In Mark 11, verse 22, And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Truly I say to you, truly, this is a statement of fact, um, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he is saying is going to happen, it will be granted to him. Many people um, are struggling right now where there's a mountain standing in their way, a mountain that opposes them, hinders them, and they're trying everything to get around the mountain. When the Word is telling us to speak to the mountain and command it to be cast into the sea. The problem is when we look at ourselves, we judge our faith as not significant. And the reality is our faith is in us, not in Him. We're looking at our ability and not believing in His ability and in what He can do. So let's pray and let's press in to receive all He has for us today. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We come by way of the blood. We come by the finished work of the cross. I thank you there's no distance in the Spirit. And Jesus, we so invite you and welcome you to come and move amongst us, to minister to each person, that each person, Father God, might be touched, changed, transformed by your touch. Holy Spirit, come, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a hearing heart. And pour in revelation of the Word. Come and make known fully what Jesus did and who we now are in Him by faith. And I thank you, Father, that in the midst of all this, Jesus would receive the honor, the power, and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said, Amen. Starting in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We think about everything that God gives to us, it is by grace. We do not in any way deserve, we do not in any way earn that which He so richly and wonderfully provides. And many of us, because we are ignorant of the Word, fail to appreciate what He has placed on the table, what He has put in the resources of heaven for us to come and to receive from Him, that on this earth we might walk blessed, blessed in such a way as to be a blessing. Yet, we're told it is by faith. Everything that we are to receive from heaven is to be by faith. We talked about that mountain moving, and it is to be moved by faith. But what is this substance of faith? Listen to what Smith Wigglesworth said here. We read in the Word that, um, that by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. By faith Noah prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Each one of these men, and we can continue, um, all the heroes of faith mentioned in the Word, what separated them was they had faith in God. They dared believe when God told them to do something. They were acting and walking and stepping out in faith. And God discriminates on behalf of those who will dare choose to believe in Him that what God said He will surely do. 
If we get a hold of this message of faith, it will bring such breakthroughs in every aspect of our life. If I continue, Smith said, there's only one way to all the treasures of God, and that is the way of faith. All things are possible, the fulfilling of all promises to him that believeth, and it is all by grace. We cannot earn it. And as much as we may study the subject of faith, the problem is most of us struggle because on this earth, it's an earning mindset. We have to earn it. We have to walk perfect. And we look at faith as something that we have to so have faith in us or earn faith, and yet it's all by grace. Understanding what faith is is so critical because I think that so many of us don't fully appreciate what faith is. And we have all these rules and laws. For example, we think maybe we haven't prayed long enough or we haven't prayed strong enough. So we've been standing for something and we feel the reason we failed is we haven't prayed right. Or we judge our faith, well, it's not strong enough, it's not big enough, it's not great enough. Yet Jesus said, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, think about that. Smith went on, there will be failure in our lives if we do not build on the base, the rock Christ Jesus. He is the only way. He is the truth. He is the life. And the word he gives us is life-giving. As we receive the word of life, it quickens, it opens, it fills us, it moves us, it changes us, and it brings into us a place where we dare say amen to all God has said. Beloved, there's a lot in and on amen. You never get uh, any place until you have the amen inside of you. <clears throat> the place where we walk receiving the word. We understand the word. And I love to think about the word. There's a charge to it. There's a life to it. Oh, we've seen, you know, so many uh, different types of drink and, and such like in different waters that you can buy and how they're so good for you. They have a charge to it. They have this to it. But the only thing that really has life to it is the word. And when we come into the secret place, not just to read the word, not just to have a mental understanding, not just to tick off the box that I read my allotted scriptures today, but rather I came to hear, to receive, and to say amen to the word. That the word is living. I think of Abraham and the Aramaic really helps us better understand the Bible that Jesus wrote. So in that Bible that Jesus read, when we think of the story of Abraham, it said the word came to him. So the word is a person. Jesus is the word and spoke to him. And Abraham believed that which was spoken to him. Today we have the word and we have to come to that place in the secret place where the word speaks to us. There's something, you know, that's deeper. You, you go into the doctor's office and the doctor shares something with you, shares that report. It goes deeper. You know, if it's a good report, it brings such confidence because we recognize and receive that doctor as an authority. And that means the words of that doctor carry greater depth. They're received into us and there's an amen to them. We assume that they, having done all their um, studies, having gone through all that experience, that when they come and they make a statement to you, that it is a qualified, it is an intelligent, it is a well thought out statement of truth. In the same way, we have to come into the secret place, meet with the Lord Jesus and have faith in Him. Believe Him. Let me share something with you. If I can find this in John chapter 6. Jesus made a statement, which he often makes, uh, this, this statement. But in Jesus, John chapter 6, let's see here. In verse 29, Jesus answered and said to him, This is the work of God, that you believe in him, whom he sent, that you believe in him, that your faith is focused on Jesus. See, you cannot make it happen. 
I cannot make that mountain move. I can't lay hands on the sick and in me have such something to heal them. He does it. He is the healer. He is the mountain mover. He is the one who answers prayer. He is the one who gives us promise. And we have to have faith in Him that He can do it. Not me. It's not me. So my eyes must get off of me and stop looking to my resources, looking to my strength, and start looking to Him. It's the focus on Him. When I bring my worship, my worship is not look what I bring you. It's look who you are. And when my eyes recognize who He is, and I truly give Him honor, then what I bring um, is different, and what I bring has a greater depth to it, because it comes from the heart. So we see now how you can separate Cain and Abel's worship because of how they saw the Lord God. And the proof of the pudding will be in Cain's response. So many of us, our heart is exposed when we come and the Lord challenges us and shows that we're not truly believing in Him. We're not truly honoring Him. We're walking in the form and not the substance. Now, continuing on. Now, again, think of what Smith said here, and I want you to think about that. Our life must build upon Jesus being the rock. That was a term the Jews used a lot. You'll find, of course, in the Psalms. You know, the rock. Jesus is that rock, that foundation in which we must build our lives. If not, then we stand on shaking ground so that when our circumstances change, um, our faith changes, our opinion changes, and everything is moved. But when you build upon a rock, and we're not talking a pebble, we're talking a massive solid rock of Jesus that is unmovable. Remember what the book of Hebrews said, that He's shaking all things, but we have an unshakable kingdom because our lives must be built upon the rock, which is Jesus. Um, Smith explained this. Zacharias, of course, who was John the Baptist's father, he was filled with unbelief until the angel said, Thou shalt be dumb, because thou believest not my words. Now, think about it for a minute. Zacharias is a highly educated priest. He knows the story of Abraham. He's in a similar boat as Abraham. He's given a promise. The Lord has said, you're going to have a child. But he, and, um, instead of like Abraham, trusting and believing in God and receiving that word, he is more moved by the situation and sees it as impossible. And his mouth confirms what he believes. See, your mouth confirms. Remember we're told we believe in the heart and with the mouth we confess. So the mouth confirms and solidifies what we believe in the heart. So his mouth revealed the heart of Zacharias that he was not truly believing in God or that what God said he could do. So Zacharias, who was filled with unbelief, until the angel said to him, Thou shalt be dumb, because thou believest not my words, which is found in Luke one twenty. Mary said, Be it unto me according to your word, Luke one thirty eight. And the Lord was pleased that she believed that there would be a performance. The difference here is very clear. Mary, facing an impossible situation, facing a situation where she knew the consequences, they were greater for her than Zacharias. Yet she trusts the word that when God spoke it, God would do it. That God could take those words and with those very words, whom He had created all things, and those words, He would watch over them and perform them. Zacharias looks at his body, looks at his wife's body, and sees it as impossible. And if the angel had not struck his tongue, he would have spread his unbelief because our words spread things. He would have convinced his wife that that baby could not happen. Look at your body. He was so filled with unbelief that God had to step in because, again, your mouth confirms what your heart believes. In Acts 12, verse 5, 
Peter has been arrested. And it's not looking good for Peter. Yet, the church gathers together and they're praying. They're seeking the Lord. They're praying long. They're having a church meeting. And they're praying and they're praying and they're praying. And the Lord sends an angel and sets Peter free. Peter comes and knocks at the door. Listen to this, Acts 12, 15, or Acts 12, 5. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. But when he knocks on the door, the woman seeing him didn't open it. Didn't open it initially. So they were not standing fully persuaded. And there's many of us have the form of prayer that we're seeking God, but we're not that place where we're settled. And to add here what Smith said, you will find that there were people waiting all night and praying that Peter might come out of prison. But there seemed to be one thing missing despite all their praying, and that was faith. And many of us, if we allow the Spirit of God to give us eyes to see, and we're willing to be corrected, we will understand that we make a lot of noise, and we're trying to get to that place where we do believe in God. But as I've said many times, there is this season of praying to get into prayer. And when you're facing a major challenge, especially when it hits you emotionally, especially when it challenges you in so many ways, the time period to get from the place of praying to get into real praying can be quite long. Where God has to do work in us, and there's a wrestling. Look at Jacob. Jacob was not transformed in the encounter. He's wrestling with the Lord God. Just think about that. He's wrestling. He's touching the Lord God himself, wrestling with him. Yet he wrestled all night, and he refused to give in. He was clearly a strong man. And that whole night, you think about how it must have exhausted him, but he could not quit. He could not give in. There was something stubborn in him, and it took the Lord to touch him you know, and knock his hip out until all of a sudden his strength was gone. He realized he couldn't do it. At that point, he had to drop and let go. And a lot of us, the God has to work on us to that place where we finally let go and we stop trying to make it happen. We stop trying to persuade God to do what often God wants to do anyways. But we feel that it's on us. The burden is on us, and we've never trusted simply, God, it's you to do. It's all about you, God. And Smith went on to say, Beloved, we may do much praying and groaning, but we do not receive from God because of that. We receive because we believe. And yet sometimes it takes God a long time to bring us through the groaning and the crying before we believe. There's this process, and unfortunately, Many of us quit in that first season. Quit before we ever get to the place. We're not taught and trained in how to pray and pray something through. How to stand. We're taught formulas. And we're taught formulas of faith. And we're not talking about the keep asking. We're talking about this praying and initially getting our eyes on Jesus. Abraham grew strong in faith, glorifying the Lord. And most of the time was the focus was on the Lord, how great He is. We spend 90% plus of our time focused on a thing that we're trying to get from the Lord and not focused on knowing Him and how big is He, glorifying, getting the revelation into ourselves of how He is the Almighty God. Our vision of the Lord is too small and our vision of the problem too big. And that initial season, we need to come trusting that He is. When He says, I am the Almighty God, He must become the Almighty God in you. The Holy Spirit must so bring that revelation that He is the Most High, He's the Lord of the hosts of the army of heaven, and He is the Almighty God, so that you stand fully persuaded that He is. He is the one that will do it. It's not me that is going to move the mountain. It is Him. It is not me. It's not some energy that I have to somehow focus to make somebody healed. It is Him. 
I simply have to trust and believe in Him. But there's this season where we must come to the place of knowing He is. And He is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Smith went on to say, I know this, that no man by his praying can change God, for you cannot change Him. Finney said, Can a man who is full of sin and all kinds of ruin in his life change God when he starts to pray? No, it is impossible. But when a man labors in prayer, he groans and travails because his tremendous sin is weighing him down, and he becomes broken in the presence of God. And when properly melted, he comes into perfect harmony with the divine plan of God. And then God can work in that day. He could not before. Prayer changes hearts, but it never changes God. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, full of love, full of compassion, full of mercy, full of grace, and ready to bestow this and communicate that to us as we come in faith to Him. And I want you to get a hold of this, how He does not change. He is the one who stays consistent. We change. I think about how the disciples on this earth walked and had a wonderful, intimate fellowship with the Lord Jesus. They would touch Him. They could, at any point, stop, ask Him a question. They're in His presence, in the presence of the Holy One. And that's a good place. We need that. But yet, Jesus would explain to them they needed to pray. And you remember He warns them after the Last Supper, pray that you enter not into temptation. Because prayer is a critical part of prayer of changing us. It's a sowing to the Spirit. It is a place in which the Spirit of God begins to transform us and bring us from one place to the other. It's a place where the Spirit of God begins to melt us, mold us, and bring us to a place where we are in tune with the Word. Some of you remember the old days of the old radios and how you had to tune them. And as you were driving, um, you'd have to correct the tuning. And we've lost sight of this need to be tuned, of being brought to the place of fine-tuned where you can hear. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word. And many of us are not even in that place where we hear the Word. We're in the place where we're looking at the Word and we're rich in our opinions. Oh, I get a lot of people call me and they abound in opinions on the Word, and they take the whole Word, and the Word bows to their opinions. It bows to the opinions of men. But the Word is Lord, and we bow to the Word. The Word must have absolute and final authority, not the opinions of men, not my opinions. Because when we take and we make the Word subject, we're taking that which is inferior, instead of receiving that which is greater and saying that which is greater carries full authority. We think that we know better. We think that man in all his limited knowledge has a deeper understanding than God who has an intimate, complete, total understanding. So when I am being changed, the Spirit of God brings so that I'm in tune with, to the place I can receive or I can begin to see who He is that I might believe in Him. He becomes bigger. He becomes greater. And the Spirit of God takes you and helps you in that place of weakness. He begins to infuse strength to you. He begins to change you, expand the pegs of your tent, and give you a richer, deeper understanding of the Lord. And it's easy to believe in Him when you know and you see who He is, when you get the revelation of His greatness. But if I stay in this place with my limited knowledge of Him, but the abundance of my opinions, I am not in tune. I'm not standing in faith. I'm standing in opinion. And I think somehow I have to persuade myself of my opinion as if it's some positive thinking. And it's not. It is a place where my eyes are focused on Him, recognizing who He is and that which He said He will surely do. Uh, Luke twenty two forty six. I refer to this. Jesus says to his disciples, Why do you sleep? Rise and pray 
lest you enter into temptation. So prayer is not changing God, trying to convince God to do something. Prayers are changing of us. Prayer is a transforming of us. And that's why most of the prayer time is not about a thing. It's not about trying to get something from God. It's about coming to the place of seeing who He really is, being changed and transformed, that we might walk in a harmony with, in a fidelity with, that we can stand before Him and truly worship Him. It's a changing in us. Smith said, believe that when you come into the presence of God, you can have all you came for. You can take it away. You can use it. For all the power of God is at your disposal in response to your faith. The price for all was paid by the blood of Jesus Christ at Calvary. Now, there's this wonderful place where in this presence of the living God, I recognize who He is. I see Him for who He is. And I know that that which He promised, He's fully able to do. And my eyes, my focus, it's all about glorifying Him. And so we come to this place, there's such a harmony. We are now going in the same direction. And I hear the Lord ask. He says, ask. That's the time to ask. But when you're there in this place, you recognize who He is. You recognize how holy He is. That your prayer, you would never dare ask anything that would bring you out of harmony with Him. Anything that's not in compliance with His perfect will. There's a holy fear that comes on you. You cannot truly stand in the presence of God, recognize Him for who He is as the Almighty God, the Most High God, the God above all, before all, the Holy One, and not walk in holy fear, and not walk in reverence, and not watch what this mouth says. Like Zacharias, many of us say what we think, and we have to stop saying what we think and be molded, be changed, and recognize Him for who He is. I think about how if an angel stood before you, how can you turn and speak unbelief? Because faith doesn't come because of what we see. Faith comes because we hear His Word, because we get a revelation of who He is. Faith comes by revelation. <laughs> Smith said, and He purposes to transform us so that the greatness of His power may work through us. Oh, beloved, God delights in us. And when a man's way please the Lord, then he makes all things move according to his own blessed purpose. If I can get from this place where I'm trying to make it happen, where I'm trying to persuade God, and I am rich in opinions, stubborn in thought, to the place of such surrender, to this place where I believe that He is, my faith is Him, not in myself, not in my opinions, not in if I just am stronger in my thoughts, if I just pray longer, if I do this or that, to this place where it's all on Him, where my focus, my attention is on Him, my faith is in Him, and all the glory, all the honor, all the worship is about Him. And in this place, God is able to so move, and it touches Him, and God begins to change things in our lives and around us. The change always begins on the inside of us. We want the change outward. God begins inward. And the more time given to Him, the more He's able to do. Smith said, but remember this. Translation only comes on the line of holy obedience and a walk according to the good pleasure of God. We are called to walk together with God through the Spirit. It is delightful to know that we can talk with God through the Spirit. It is delightful to know that we can talk with God and have communion with Him through this wonderful baptism of the Spirit, which the Lord gives us. He enables us to talk to Himself in a language the Spirit has given, a language which no man can understand, but which He understands, a language of love. Oh, how wonderful it is to speak to Him in the Spirit, to let the Spirit lift and lift and lift us, until He takes us into the very presence of God. And we're to build ourselves in our holy faith while praying in the Spirit. There's something because that praying in the Spirit is a powerful tool to declare, God, I am weak. I am the one that needs changed. 
And I don't want to contaminate. I don't want my words, my opinions to get in the way. But I want to come to this place where your perfect will is my desire. To please you, that which you purpose for my life would come forth in my life. So we begin to pray in the Spirit. And it will build you up spiritually on the inside. It will transform you. It is a sowing to the Spirit. And it's a place where the Spirit of God can now begin to build in us a bigger vision of God, of who He is and the authority that He has. Praying to the Spirit is something we should be doing all the time because it's a sowing. And what we sow, we walk in the harvest of. If we're going to change today and change tomorrow, then we change what we sow. And realize that there's often a time gap between what we sow and what we reap. You may sow and you may pour it all out, but you may not see it for days or weeks, but you keep sowing. And when you walk on the harvest, you don't quit. That's the time to sow more and learn how to fine tune your sowing, how to walk more accurately with the Spirit by faith. Smith said, I believe there are two kinds of faith. All people are born with an, uh, a neural faith, but God calls us, sorry, natural faith, but God calls us to a supernatural faith, which is a gift from Himself. That place where we are so much looking to ourself, thinking that we can do it, to the place where our trust is in Him. Where I walk no longer looking to myself, somehow thinking that I have the strength or the ability or the skill, but a place where it's all about Him. Where I recognize my complete weakness and my desperate need of Him. Galatians 2, verse 20. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave His life for me. This new walk, this new life, is a place of death. Death to the old. And we have to come to this in our prayer life where all the old has been so crucified and there's no looking to ourselves, no looking to our opinions, but rather this place, all eyes on Him. It's about His Word. It's about receiving Him and allowing Him to live through us. We die. Unfortunately, most of us walk in this place where we're supposed to be dead, but we're still living. The old man continues to live, rich in his opinions, still dictating, controlling, manipulating. All that must be crucified. All that must come to an end because that man has died. Stop resurrecting him. And in the place, allow Jesus. See, and that's how I have to sow to him. I have to yield and I have to get the vision of who he is. I've got to get the vision by the Spirit, what He did, and walk in that and get a deeper understanding of that. It's got to get bigger in me. As I abide in Him, in His words abide in me. You cannot abide in Him in the secret place without the abiding in His Word rich in you. Because you hear His Word. His Word carries more weight. There's a greater hunger for His Word. It grows, it increases, and you want more. Smith said, the faith of the Son of God, communicated by the Spirit to the one who puts his trust in God and in his Son. I want to show you the difference between our faith and the faith of Jesus. Our faith is limited and comes to an end. Most people have an experience coming to the place where they have said, Lord, I can go no further. I have gone so far, I cannot go on. But God can help us and take us beyond this. And see, many of us, we are the one always making it happen. And our faith is and confidence is in us. We are Jacob's. Jacob so long was making and doing, but he was creating, like his father, Ishmael's. And we've got to get past the place of being like, our, uh, like Abraham, creating Ishmael's, and instead begin to surrender, begin to yield. When Jacob came to that place of such surrender in the secret place where he wrestled with God all night and he came to the end, recognizing he could not do it, and now even more so because his hip was out, he can't walk. 
So he is now weak. Oh, when God brings us to a place of weakness. It is a horrible place, but it's the greatest place. Your fleshman hates it, and it's crucified, because I look all around, and now my resources are gone. Now my ability to do something is over. And if God doesn't come through, I'm going under. And we hate that. It's so insecure. We always want to be able to do it. But this is the place where God wants to bring us so that He might move so powerfully in our lives that we might know He is the Lord our God. And you might have something to share and to testify that by faith, see that's the testament by faith. When I came to an end and I could go on no further, when I was unable hadn't had the, didn't have the resources, and my God moved. In that place where if He didn't, I was going on, but He moved. And He always does above and beyond. That's the place of testimony. That's what the world needs to hear. Smith faced a situation once, and he says, I saw there in the presence of that demented girl limitations to my faith. But as I prayed, there came another faith into my heart that could not be denied. A faith that grasped the promise. A faith that believed God's word. And I came from the presence of the glory back to earth. I was not the same man. I confronted the same conditions I'd seen before, but in the name of Jesus. With faith that could shake hell and move anything. See, most of us continue to operate in our faith, in our belief in us, in our strength. And we don't go beyond we don't press in to get a hold, to recognize who He is and come where we're so yielded that God now can work through us. There's nothing that I can bring or offer. You need Him. Sadly, so many people share and abound and walk in the richness of them and their opinions. And they'll only carry somebody so far. You need Him. And if we come to that place where our eyes are no longer on us, but on Him, and we will give Him the time and the place. If we will abide in His Word and allow the Spirit of God to come and speak that Word with such an authority, it is authority in our lives. It is received. And we trust that what He said He can surely do. And that I may understand, but His Word is faithful. It is true. And allow that Word to do such a work in us. It brings us to the place where God can now walk and work through us. Smith said this, Enoch walked with God. During those many years of his life, he was penetrating the heavens, laying hold of and believing God, living with such cooperation and such a touch of God upon him that things moved on earth, things moved in heaven. He became such a heavenly being that it was not possible for him to stay here any longer. What a thought to get so focused on God, to get so consumed in Him, where we no longer belong to this earth, to this place where God recognizes we are truly His. Sold out, yielded, our lives lived, focused on Him. Oh, may God bring us to such a place where we are raptured in Him, always caught up in Him, always consumed in Him, so that He is bigger, He is everything. When we read the Word, it's all the authority speaking into our lives. Smith said, I believe that all failures come because of an imperfect understanding of God's Word. I see that it is impossible to please God in any of the lines, but by faith. And everything that's not of faith is sin. See, we live in an hour where the Word is so subject to us. And we put God in a box based on our opinions. We've predetermined what God can and can't do, what God's changed on. God changes, we don't. And we've lost it. How irreverent, how disrespectful, how unhonoring. If we would so come into the secret place and place everything on the altar and say, God, you are absolutely faithful. You are absolutely true. You are Lord. Change me. Transform any area of my life is on the altar, that you be glorified, that we would simply come that He might be glorified, that He might be lifted up, that He might be worshipped. Not our problem. Oh, we get so consumed in the problem, in the situation, it captures the mind and the heart. May He be the one 
May we abide in that place where He is everything. All glory to Him, all worship to Him. That you stand unshaken, unmoved, knowing that that which He promised, He can do. And that He is Lord of Lords. He has a good plan for your life and He will not fail you, but He is always keeping you. Let me finish with this. Can He not speak the word that will produce a mighty faith in us? Yeah. This one who is the author and the finish of our faith comes and dwells in us, quickens us by the Spirit, and molds us by His will. He comes to live His life of faith within us and to be to us all that we need. And He who begun a good work in us will complete and perfect it. In this place where we so realize who is in us, and we allow Him to simply be Lord, to have His way. We just give Him the honor, the place, the position, as we give Him the worship, as we just see Him and believe in Him. He begins to do such a work in us. He cannot fail to do. He cannot fail to produce. And He's always fruitful. But we've got to believe in Him. I look as I finish at the people in His hometown when He came It said that he could do no mighty work there because why they couldn't see him as anything more than the carpenter's son, the Mary's child. They couldn't see him as anything more than just that carpenter that walked amongst them, I should say. As that man, they couldn't see him as anything more. And we have put the limitations on God. We've not seen him for who he is. Oh, may the Spirit of God remove our blinders. Remove all our opinions this day that we might see who he is. And I'll realize that He's in us. And if we so yield and surrender and give Him the time and the place and give Him all the glory, the change He will do in us, the transformation, and how He is the author and the perfecter of our faith, He will produce that faith that is not focused on us but on Him because He is the only one able and eager to do. Amen. Well, I pray this message has blessed you, and I just truly cry out that in the name of Jesus, you will be so touched, strengthened, and encouraged in the mighty name of Jesus. And I would ask in the name of Jesus, would you please share, subscribe, like, and give comments? Because as you do, you truly help us to reach more people, to have a greater impact, that this door that God's opened, that we might truly see the pegs of the tents expanded reach more people to live boldly for Jesus, to preach this glorious gospel. And I thank you. If you don't have a local church right now and you're looking for one, consider joining our online services that as you're looking, you might be encouraged, strengthened, and built up. Have your heart healed so that that place that God places you, you might go to be a blessing. For more information, go to robertpairs.org and go to the About page and go to the church. And would you also consider being a partner with a prayer financial? For more information, go to robertpairs.org and go to the partner. I just want to let you know that we're praying for you. And we just bless and we are so eager to see you walking strong in the Lord in this hour. Walking victorious. We are in the last days and we stand together that God may be glorified in the church and that we might come to the place as a church without spot or wrinkle. Amen. Thank you. And as always, I remind you, that this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it because, through, and for Him. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you.